I'm here today to talk to you about an emerging treatment option called repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation or RTMS. Now RTMS is generally used as a treatment for medication resistant major depressive disorder. About 4.7% of the population has major depression in any given year and at least one out of three of those people does not respond to conventional antidepressant medications or psychotherapy. For people who don't get better on conventional treatments, other treatment options, brain stimulation options like RTMS are sometimes worth pursuing. The device is an electromagnet that generates a powerful but finely focused magnetic field, as strong as the one in an entire MRI scanner, but focused into an area about the size of a dime. It's powerful enough that if you place it over the area of the brain that moves the thumb and apply a few pulses of stimulation, you will actually see the person's thumb move. The way we use it therapeutically is to target areas of the brain which are involved in self-regulation of thoughts, self-regulation of behaviors, and self-regulation of emotions. By stimulating these areas repeatedly, hundreds of times a day, we can gradually strengthen their activity, synchronize the areas of the network and bring them back together, and hopefully improve the person's depressed mood. When we perform our TMS, we find that about one out of three people has a strong response with 80 or 90% improvement in their symptoms on standard scales. Another one out of three people gets a partial response with a 40 to 60% improvement on standard scales. And unfortunately, there are about one out of three people where the brain does not pick up the signal and does not respond to treatment. Now that compares favorably to medications and therapy for people who have already tried at least two adequate courses of medication or a course of psychotherapy. So where our TMS lives in your treatment algorithm is usually after medications and therapies have been tried, but before going to a more invasive option such as electroconvulsive therapy or ECT. There are some important differences between ECT and RTMS. Whereas ECT is delivered under anesthesia and requires the induction of a seizure for its therapeutic effect and is sometimes uh, worrisome for generating cognitive side effects such as episodic memory impairment, RTMS does not seem to do any of those things. RTMS is delivered awake in a chair by a treatment technician without any anesthesia and there is no induction of a seizure necessary for the treatment to take effect. It also does not seem to have any cognitive impairment as an adverse effect of treatment. The three downsides of RTMS are fairly straightforward. Number one, it takes 20 to 30 sessions of RTMS to get a maximum effect. So for most people, the biggest downside is that they have to come into hospital for 20 or 30 visits to get a full effect of the treatment. The second downside is that it can feel a little bit like static electricity shocks to the forehead and the face. Most people will rate them as painful, around a 6 out of 10 pain during the first week and down to a 3 out of 10 pain by the final week of treatment. 95% of patients do find it as tolerable and are able to make it to the end, which compares favorably to the 25% of patients who do not make it to the end of medication trials in clinical studies. Now the only serious side effect of RTMS is about one in a thousand people who in response to the treatment will show a seizure. RTMS can induce seizures in about one in a thousand people. It's a fairly rare effect. Most uh, folks in our clinic over the last five years we've seen 2,000 people or so. We've delivered 25 or 30,000 sessions of stimulation. So far we haven't had a seizure in the clinic. So the adverse effect is rare, but it does exist. So we always warn people about it. How do you get somebody in for RTMS? The process is something we've tried to keep quite simple. On our website, www.rtmsclinic.ca, there's a one page referral form. Any MD or GP or psychiatric specialist can complete the RTMS referral form and fax it to us at the number attached. We will then book the patient to be seen, usually within two to four weeks. We'll assess their symptoms, we'll assess their eligibility for RTMS, and we'll determine whether it makes sense to go ahead. Once a referral's in, the person, if they're accepted, will come in for four to six weeks of treatment, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we'll see whether they turn out to be a treatment responder or a non-responder. There are some important things you can do as the referring physician to make sure the treatment goes smoothly. First of all, if it's the person's first treatment, it's important to keep all of their medications stable. They do not need to come off medications prior to starting 
their RTMS treatment, but we'd like them to be on a stable regimen for a minimum of four weeks before the treatment and throughout the course of treatment so that we can be sure to determine whether it's the treatment that's working for them or any medication changes. There are some medications that need to be watched out for with RTMS. Benzodiazepines can, in high doses, block the effects of RTMS. We don't like to see patients taking more than 4 mg a day of lorazepam equivalent uh, when they're referred for RTMS. If they are, then the dose may need to come down before they can begin. Anticonvulsant medications also need to be avoided. Things like the Motrogine, Topiramate, Pregabalin, or Gabapentin, all of these should be discontinued in order to make sure that the RTMS has the best chances of success. If the RTMS is successful, then we will follow them on one or two occasions for a period of three months, and we will make certain recommendations. One of those recommendations where RTMS is successful is for the person to enroll in a course of mindfulness-based stress reduction or mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. These treatments have been shown to be similarly effective to medications in preventing relapse back into depression, and they can extend the duration of the treatment. In the absence of these measures, we will find that RTMS is not permanent. It's more like exercise than surgery. Typically, people will obtain a remission period of between 4 to 12 months from a single course of RTMS, but after that time, they will begin to come back and say that their symptoms are returning. If that happens, they're welcome to come back and do booster sessions with us. We can set the number of booster sessions based on how severe their relapse is, and we also have more leeway to offer the treatment not necessarily five days a week, but if the patient is busy or is attending work, they can sometimes come once a week, once every two weeks, or two times a week for the booster sessions and still have good effect. If the treatment is unsuccessful, it's sometimes worth pursuing referral to a more intensive stimulation modality. In this case, we are talking about ECT. So for a person who has severe depression, not responsive to RTMS or medications or psychotherapies, ECT is a good next step, which means that RTMS lives on your treatment algorithm somewhere after medications and therapies have been tried, but before more intensive stimulations like ECT. Your patients may have questions about RTMS. Our website, www.rtmsclinic.ca, does have a frequently asked questions section for patients. We also have a frequently asked questions section for physicians. And if you have any further questions about the treatment, you're also welcome to contact us via the clinic's website or via the clinic's email address, all of which is provided on the site. I hope this information has been useful for you. Uh, we are happy to receive referrals from uh, your clinics either in the Greater Toronto area or in the Ontario area. If you or your patients are outside of Ontario, it may make sense to pursue treatment at a local clinic. We maintain a small website, RTMS Canada, which will show you where clinics in Canada are. So rtmscanada.ca will show you the locations and the contact information for the approximately 20 RTMS clinics which exist here in Canada in the various provinces. Please get in touch if you have any further questions. All the best.